You price at the high end of the range, your stock could open at 50. Did you leave money on the table? Are you at all surprised by the demand? Well, I think we price on the demand. Uh, we know exactly what we do, and I think this is an appropriate price where we went out with. And there should be room for improvement, of course. Nevertheless, I, you could be opening at 50 bucks. Um, you've raised circa 200 million. You could have raised um, 600 million. You could have used that money uh, potentially to drive this company further forward. I, I, I'm just curious as to what the conversations you were having you with your advisors. Uh, they were telling you 16 looks like a reasonable price. Yet here we are, Friday, 50 bucks could be the opening price. That's a pretty big spread. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we didn't know this yesterday, of course, uh, but I think what we have, uh, we, we evaluated what we have and what we are up to, and we really want to drive the company any further. And then uh, certainly what the market conditions are, you only know later, but I think we are in a very good shape. Uh, we are obviously still waiting for that stock to trade. There were also some reports earlier today that you're in talks with some potential partners on producing uh, a vaccine. Can you give us some details? Yes, of course. So uh, it's just a few weeks ago that we signed a uh, major agreement, a platform agreement with uh, GlaxoSmithKline, JSK, one of the world leading infectious disease companies. It's not only about prophylactic vaccines, but also about um, protective antibodies, which you can code on RNA. And the RNA is delivering the message to the body to produce its own vaccine or the own antibody in order to be protective. And that's pretty broad. And this is what we are evaluating with JSK on this strategic deal. Very important for us. Can, can, uh, you're in phase one. Um, you are going to brief the markets uh, in a little while about how that phase one trial is going. Uh, messenger RNA, obviously something that hasn't really been done before and given regulatory clearance before. Um, can you give us an update as to what progress you're making? Uh, is it going well? Let's start there. Well, mRNA is in the clinics for a while now in different indications in oncology, for example, but also in prophylactic vaccines. We are working in prophylactic vaccines now since 2011 and started the first clinical trial in 2015. And uh, what we see here in the COVID-19 vaccine candidate, what we are developing is we had, first of all, preclinical studies to find the best candidate to go with. And we are in a very low dosage. It's a two, four, six, eight microgram in a dose finding regime and we are waiting to see the uh, the optimal dosage to be defined then somewhere in end of September beginning of October and it looks pretty safe and tolerable which is first thing but then it should uh, generate virus neutralizing titers to get a protection and we are, have very high hopes on this. Uh, Kirvac now indicated to open at 4535, so we'll keep you updated, uh, doctor, as we go. So um, what we've also seen a lot of is it just takes a lot of money to uh, make these vaccines. Talk to me about the relationship you have with the German government. Like, who is buying the vaccine already? How much money are you going to need to develop it? Uh, and how do you then disperse it? Like, how do you think about a profit on that sense? Yeah, well, uh, to start with the investment to put into this accelerated, in this case, because of the pandemic outbreak, uh, uh, accelerated development of the vaccine. And this certainly costs quite a lot of money. This is a, a significant three-digit million amount because uh, after the first phase, you have to go international to go where the virus is. And then you have to recruit thousands of human subjects in order to be vaccinated. So all of this does cost a lot of money. And then certainly it is... It is the governments who are, at the end of the day, your, your uh, customers. You see this with other pharma companies as well who are signing already kind of advanced purchase agreements um, uh, in order to secure certainly the dosages. Our inv the investment of the German government into CureVac, however, is an equity investment to develop the company and the technology of the company to be much more applicable also for other things apart from COVID-19. As you said, we are in a rabies vaccine, we are working in the oncology space, but also in the protein therapy place, space. And on top of this, certainly upscaling the manufacturing, because this is what you need. If you have got a decent working and protective um, vaccine, you should be in a position to have a broad uh, availability, which means manufacturing. And then you come to the point and say where to distribute and allocate it from. At the end of the day, the entire world should be vaccinated in order to fight the current disease. Yep. Dr. Haas, 
How do you think about what is happening right now? Is it a race to be first? Does that matter? Um, we, we spoke to the, to the, to the Russian producer uh, of a vaccine earlier on this week, uh, and the Russians certainly seem to have decided that it is a race and you need to be first. Does it matter being first? Um, is it a race? And, and do you think people will pay more for a more effective vaccine? It is definitely a race. It is a race not that much against the competition of other vaccine producers out there. It is a race against the virus. It's a race against the time because you see what all this virus, this pandemic does to the entire society. So therefore it is a race and to be fast is really key here. You need to be safe and efficacious with this vaccine, but to be the first one in the market doesn't mean that you are capturing the entire market in order to, because you have to produce it, you have to make a vaccine available. That's one thing. The other thing is really that you need to have a protective vaccine. As it is a new virus, nobody knows really today what kind of level of protection you need to generate by your vaccine in order to be protected on the one side and how long you want to be protected. And therefore, we have been optimizing our, our RNA to come from a low dosage with a long protection. And that's what it's all about. And therefore, there are plenty of vaccine players there. And hopefully, plenty of those will do it. At the end of the day, we will see which vaccine works the best. And this is all depending on data and data which we haven't seen so far.